Well, DTR is not hurt. He said he was available at Saturday on Saturday's game after he was pulled. What does this mean? Why was he pulled? And what are his reactions to it? Eh, we'll get to it. Locked on UCLA. Let's hit that music, baby. You are locked on UCLA. Your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey everybody, it's your favorite host. I'm Zach Anderson Yoxheimer. Glad to join you once again. You're listening to Locked On UCLA. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. It's available wherever you you get your podcast. It's free. Odyssey, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you go. Also, you can go to YouTube and look and find the Locked On UCLA channel. Subscribe to the channel when we put up episodes, reactions, talk about recruits, everything. Go check out YouTube, subscribe. And like, comment. What, what do you think about the Bruins so far? They are 2 in O. Anyways, Bruin fans, you can follow us at Locked On Bruins on Twitter, at Zach and Yox on Twitter. That's my personal. Otherwise, get your hands in the air, Bruin fans. It's a clap time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fight. As I teased in the open, DTR. With his most recent practice availability, he was there. So is Zach Charbonnet in terms of practice, available to practice. It's DTR, the super senior, who got to be the man of the, the hour to go to the media, talk to the media. And here's the most important thing, the highlights, I think, that are most important for DTR. He is not hurt. He said he's not hurt. Says he's 100% in that Garbs, Ethan Garbers, got the call that it was his time to, to go lead the offense in the middle of a drive of what was a one-score game against Alabama State in the second quarter. Quote on him getting pulled out, this is what he said, the competitor in me is a little frustrated, and he went on to further that quote, but he couldn't be happier, couldn't be, hap- couldn't be more happy, a little paraphrase there, couldn't be happier with how his guys played and executed the offense on Saturday. So a guy that knows how to be a leader, mature young man, and said he was frustrated, the competitor in him, and also said, all right, offense, he got led by Ethan Garbers. Continually, one last question I saw with that media availability. Asked if he was available on Saturday. He said, yeah, you can go with that. I was available. So for what that means, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, in addition to the many question marks we already have about Zach Charbonnet, Thompson-Robinson, DTR, answering things about himself, saying, A, he was healthy, he's not hurt, which leads him to be Ready come South Alabama 11 a.m. on Saturday. One of many 11 a.m. kicks we'll probably see during this season. But for at least with the road to Colorado. But more on that later. DTR says he's not hurt. He's 100% and he's happy for his guys. I was saying in a recent podcast, if you look at that one play, that shovel play, he gets tackled behind the play and his ankle seems to get twisted up on him. Maybe he wasn't hurt. Maybe this is Chip Kelly saying, hey, let's take you out. So let's go through two ideas of reasoning. One, we'll start with why they took him out, at least in my perspective, beyond what DTR is telling us and what Chip Kelly's telling us. And then two, just why DTR is just a perfect man to lead this team, regardless if he's a quarterback or if he's just behind the scenes, captain answering the media questions. We'll go through that. First, why do we think he was taken out? I went through the games. This is just the games he has not played in. In 2018, yes, way back in Chip Kelly's first season, he was a true freshman, only played in 10 of the 12 games. The difference then was he wasn't supposed to start immediately coming out of high school from Vegas. It was uh, Wilton Spate got hurt, all those things. He played in only 10 of the 12 games, missed two of the 12. Wasn't expect exactly expected to be his year, but instead of theme, he has not played a complete season at all from all 12 games to the shortened Pac-12 season, the shortened Pac-12 season in 2020. Missed the Oregon State game in 2019. Missed the Oregon game in 2020, a game where the Bruins were oh so close to knocking off the Ducks in Eugene, heartbreakingly so. Missed the Utah game in 2021. And now in 2022, he was pulled early against Alabama State. And that's with all those games he's missed. That doesn't include the games he's been pulled early, like the Oregon game last year, 
being knocked around, a little banged up. So DTR has this history of being injured. And whether there's all this speculation of, did Chip Kelly actually want DTR to come back? Did he necessarily not want him to come back? Was it Garber's time to shine? Did they lose recruits? All these things with Thompson Robinson coming back. One, regardless, he's athletic. He's a mature senior. He can handle a situation like this. And my personal opinion, I think he was just being very careful with DTR in a combination of getting Garber's reps. That's simple, easy thought process. Maybe you can be in the same line of thinking as me. They want to get guys reps. It's almost not a matter of if, but when DTR misses a game due to injury, it seems like considering he has not played a single 12 game season in his first four years as a Bruin. There's a reason he hasn't broken. He hasn't broken any of the career games played or starts yet as a Bruin, even though he's five years in game two, two games in with a couple of starts under his belt in 2022. I think they're being careful, especially with Zach Charbonnet. You can kind of piggyback that, that onto here. They're going to lean on Charbonnet so much this year when they're going to have to play these teams down the stretch in Pac-12 play, especially when SC comes to town to the Rose Bowl in the middle of November. Bruins are going to need to dominate time of possession, and they will need to have their dynamic playmakers, regardless if you think Dorian Thompson Robinson's the man or not. He's the guy that's led this offense for years. He's beaten SC on the road. He's been a part of a team that beat SC in 18 at the Rose Bowl. He's been a part of a team that beat SC, led the Bruins to scoring 60-plus against the Trojans. Different regime, I know, but in the Coliseum, and with all the games leading up to it, the Bruins need to get better, and they Miss Charbonnet, yes. Miss DTR, yes. But for all intents and purposes, it looks like both of them are healthy. But DTR had to answer the media and said, all right, he's healthy. He's cool. He's ready to go. DTR says, all right, we should expect him. Not him saying this, but this is my thing. He's saying, all right, he's ready to go come Saturday, 11 a.m. against South Alabama. A team who's 2-0 as well, just like the Bruins. So, interesting enough, they took out DTR. And while they said, uh, Chip Kelly said things about unavailability, DTR says you could say he was available, but just the teammate, the sheer teammate he is, cheering on his guys. We'll talk about that after I tell you some words about upside. From cringing at the pump to an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us where it hurts. It really hurts. That's why you can start using upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, you can earn cash back thanks to Upside. All you have to do is to get started, download the free Upside app, use the promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. And now you can see that's why Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why in the App Store, they've got a 4.8 star rating. They've got credit card rewards, loyalty programs, and in comparison to those two things, the credit card rewards and loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back in comparison to those. Get the more cash back over a million dollars per week for all these upside users. Most importantly, download the free upside app. Use the promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using the promo code LOCKED. Okay, let's let's continue this thought about Dorian Thompson Robinson. Why do we think he is the man that is just a perfect teammate? I talked about why he's the guy in terms of, all right, he's hurt, he's back, we're expecting him to play. And I know some people aren't Dorian Thompson Robinson's biggest fan on the, of the play on the field. He didn't look too impressive against Bowling Green. And while he had a good start against Alabama State, the Bruins were still close when they pulled him early, I think due to... Just let's keep him healthy. We don't need to have him dinged up against an FCS opponent against Alabama State and HBCU school. A game with Bruins. After they pulled Rob Tor Thompson Robinson, the backups, everybody else came in, dominated the Bruins defense, got some stops, stopped letting the Hornets move up and down, and got the ball rolling. That would end up with another 45-point offensive showing and a 45-7 win. So for Dorian Thompson Robinson, I talked about A, all right, think he's okay, he's cool, and now two, B, whatever you want to go with this list here, he's just an amazing leader. Think about a guy who says, the competitor in me is a little frustrated, but he couldn't be happier with the guys, with how the guys played. Uh, uh, 
executed offensively and how they executed the offense. He said there's a moment where there's a false start penalty against the Bruins offense. Garbers was clapping his hands. He, I think he said Keegan Jones was the one who false started. He had to scream from the sideline telling Garbers, hey, this is what you got to do. Stop clapping your hands. Do better. Do this. And helping his teammates move forward. This is the sign of a leader, a five, five-year leader, a, a true captain, a true leader of the offense of the team. I know there's the whole thing where he brought the team on the boats, the yachts, I think, with his NIL deal in the offseason. He, he's got the flash on the field, but he's got the grinded out effort in terms of locker room presence. This is a guy who, he, he, how can you not like Dorian Thompson Robinson? Just, he, he's got the flash, yes, but he's also got the grit to fight through. He's been banged up quite a bit through his UCLA career to continue to come back, want to come back this fifth year regardless of if you at home as a Bruins fan wanted him to come back or not. He came back. He's earned his degree. He's like many of these Bruins, postgraduate, going through more schooling and looking to lead UCLA as he wants, as many of these Bruins want, back to the, the promised land, at least step one, peg one, which is get to the Rose Bowl, win a Rose Bowl. And with the way the things are lining up across the nation, so many upsets in college football, the Bruins have that dream schedule. It's as easy as could be. As terrible as Bowling Green looks after they lost to an FCS opponent in seven overtimes, the Bruins having to struggle a little bit early against an FCS opponent of their own at home. Then they get South Alabama, eight home games, whatever. The Bruins have a perfect opportunity to get to this dream season. And DTR, I think, is a perfect man to lead the team, regardless of if he's the, the quarterback, if he's simply the guy behind the scenes helping Garbers under his wing. There's just no reason why we can't like DTR, even if he is not the most accurate passer. You can go look across town and see what the pro football focus says offensively and all sorts of things and Heisman odds. But we as a Bruin fan base should step back and just enjoy Dorian Thompson Robinson stepping up to the media and answering the questions. Why weren't you available? What What's the dealio with this and that? And how just poised he is with his answers. We've seen plenty of quarterbacks be immature, get banged up, can't come back for luck, unlucky, but just the the sense that he seems to be a true team first player and how the Bruins are very, should be thankful for all the Bruins fan base. This is a guy who's been through the works, gone through COVID. He's been through the pre-COVID Chip Kelly era, during COVID, and now the post-COVID era. Those are kind of almost three separate years, three separate eras of itself. Before COVID, when he was a youngster, right when he was about to burst on the scene and the Bruins seemed like ready to move and then happened to be 2020. They couldn't do anything about it, couldn't get any wins on the field in terms of getting those close losses. And then now these last couple of years, last year, slowly bursting on the scene, Bruins going 8-4, and four, turning the table, losing that bowl game that they would have played in if COVID hadn't struck with that weird nonsense at, at the end of the season. And then to this year, the Bruins having a team that's poised, ready, and this is the leadership they need to go into those tough games they'll have later, the Oregons, the Utahs, and the SCs. I know the Stanford game will always be tough, that short weekend at Cal with Washington, another short week coming up in a couple of weeks, a few weeks for the Bruins. UCLA is going to need that senior leadership. DTR provides it, and we just, just got to highlight DTR. I've gone through episodes where we highlight the unsung guys, and we've seen how important Charbonnet can be on the field. I believe what the the early analytics or early things about week one, Zach Charbonnet was one of the best at breaking tackles or forcing missed tackles against Bowling Green, a defense who, all right, yeah, they gave a lot of points to, to Eastern Kentucky last week. But still, it's, a, it's Charbonnet who didn't get a lot of offensive line help week one, had to fight through the line. The Bruins got back running the football. But it's DTR, the man who... Who runs the machine? I know we talked Chip Kelly, but it's DTR who can help tell the guys, all right, let's get excited. A lot of energy from Thompson Robinson's presence. However, it's the Bruins leading on a fifth year senior's presence to help lead a team that is, you know, full of transfers, transfer you, all sorts of things. Wait, did I say transfer you? Yes, I did say transfer you. Isn't it ironic? That we're talking about Don, Thompson Robinson, but also just around the same time, the Bruins football Twitter account said, all right, transfer you. That's why Thompson Robinson should be even more beloved because he's bringing a lot of guys. He's dealing with a lot of guys who have either come to the program, left, gone to the NFL, coming in from other programs, helping them feel welcome along with the new staff members, Chip Kelly, uh, maybe a fan base that doesn't appreciate him as a quarterback as much as maybe they should. 
at just being a great human young man. And the Bruins got a great quarterback room. If you can consider Chase Griffin, the NIL Male Athlete of the Year. You've got Garbers, who's been patient, waiting. And then there's Dorian Thompson-Robinson, who's just been at the forefront of it all. As we now shift our gears into the likes of Transfer U. What does Transfer U mean? Well, it was the tweet by the UCLA graphic. Since 2020, UCLA has had 20 starters utilize the most transfers in their roster for the UCLA football squad. So Chip Kelly hasn't made it a secret. He's been quoted since before the season. It's tougher. I, I want to go through the transfer portal. You only need a couple of recruits from true high school kids, true freshmen. He wants to find those mature young men coming from other schools. The, the Say the Charbonnets, the all these guys coming over, the Jake Bobos, more talent is easy. Her and his names keep flip-flopping in my head as key guys. Multiple guys transfers on the UCLA team. Graduates and transfers for the Bruins coming in. And UCLA made it clear they are going after older young men. Chip Kelly wanted to get veteran guys who have been in college football, who have proven things at the D1 level, which is also why I would say DTR is a little more special, dealing with all the different personalities and players coming in and out of the program. But even though UCLA still hypes themselves up as transfer you, who are some of the key guys? You have walk-ons getting scholarships, whether it be kickers, punters, Hudson, Happermill. You have guys filling in tight end roles, different spots getting scholarship money like Shea Pitts, amongst others, being awarded from walk-on to scholarship. Josiah Norwood, who's come in week one, scored a touchdown and went from quarterback to wide receiver. Colton we had Yankoff, who was able to go from the likes of quarterback, running back, receiver, through all these things, even being joked about by DTR, as a, even better than Taysom Hill. We'll pump the brakes there. But as much as the Bruins are trying to tout themselves as transfer you, you also have to be a type of guy who's willing to work in the locker room. So maybe we can't be as reactionary to the tweet saying transfer you, but what Chip Kelly wants to instill in his players at least from the outset, and what the guys he's trying to recruit, tough-minded people who have proven themselves or are willing to put in the work to prove to themselves and prove to the coaching staff, including Chip Kelly as a whole, that they're worthy of getting a spot. Yes, that class of 23 doesn't look all too mighty. I'll go over it right now for the Bruins. Depending on what you use, I believe I saw 247 sports. If They have a, a rank about 85th in the nation. Two four-star recruits. Roderick, Roderick, I should say, Roderick Robinson II and Trey Edwards. Ironically enough, those two played in a football game recently in this last week. Robinson's Lincoln High from San Diego took on Trey Edwards, the linebacker, also from the San Diego area, Shula Vista officially, modern-day Catholic, not to be confused with modern-day in Santa Ana. Those are two different things. Robinson's team put up 56 points on Edwards' modern-day Catholic team in a blowout win. Robinson scored eight touchdowns and had, I think, over 400 yards, something ridiculous, 50 carries, something completely mind-boggling. Those are your two four-star recruits, a linebacker who the Bruins need to find to fill into what might be an empty linebacking core come next year with, depending on the athletes, the guys who leave or come in. And then you have, of course, Charbonnet, he'll be gone. And then Robinson for UCLA coming in will look to fill in as a nice starting tailback. Those are your two four-star recruits. And the Bruins have four three-star recruits. So that's your class of 23. But their transfer portal or the transfer ranking, it says number 34. So a lot better. And the Bruins grabbing guys who are transfer guys. They don't want to work with freshmen who want to play right away or guys who are young, maybe not as strong, ready to play immediate college football. That was old school college football, right? Or old school sports, professional sports, college sports, where – you had to earn your keep. You had to wait a couple of years. The rookies didn't immediately come impress. And if you were a rookie, a freshman who was spectacular out of nowhere, it's either due to out of necessity from an injury or you're Heisman ready. Despite what this last decade shown us of how impressive that these freshmen or these redshirt freshmen or these people who enrolled early and are six months into their college career but ended high school early, we, the Bruins are still going more for an old school look of you got to earn your keep. If you're special, we'll, we'll find those those gritty guys from certain aspects of the high school landscape around the nation. But they're finding different guys from different communities 
in from different universities who have the grades because it is tough to get into UCLA. They always tell they want the number one public university years in a row. I believe they just tweeted number one public university in the nation six years in a row, something along the, the along those lines. But it's still tough to get into UCLA. It's tough to get the good grades to get in, transferring in. So Kelly's got to find different guys. That's not always talked about when it comes to recruiting certain athletes. It's tough to get into UCLA to simply get in, then to play football. And the Bruins, you know, they got to play in West. They go to school in Westwood, go to the Rose Bowl. Some people don't like that. Other UCLA fans, it's been 40 years since the Bruins have been in the Rose Bowl and moved from the Coliseum. They have their true home. Some people love it. Maybe the move to the Big Ten will make them change homes. That's a whole other discussion for a whole other story. It's the Bruins finding ways to get gritty guys, transfer you, yes, but not necessarily as they are currently led by a redshirt fifth-year senior quarterback, something that's not been happened. So we can't get completely overblown by the fact that the Bruins do churn out talent and find guys in their program who stick with them and earn scholarships and fight through the program, whether it be low stars, even no stars, not even completely rated as some of these guys who just were awarded scholarships have been, or the three stars that don't get action early and then find ways late. You have the Greg Dolchich, Dolchich of the world. You have all these guys who finally find their way moving forward through the program and even other than just earning a UCLA degree, degree or good UCLA career, it's maybe worked their way to the NFL, but the Bruins do find the ways to turn these transfers into something special. They find the way to recruit the certain elements to the Chip Kelly era of building guys who aren't as highly touted as, say, other universities are getting from certain guys, whether it's shady or not, and they build them up. But we can't be, or at least I'm not, reactionary. All right, Chip Kelly already said flat out, boom. Now the graphic with the tweet, which is a, a public service announcement, hey, we're not going as importantly invested in these freshmen. No, that's not the case. But is it really the worst? They find those guys who will stay around for quite a few years in a day and age where everybody wants to bounce and leave, where you don't play right away or you don't vibe with the coach initially, mesh. And I know mental health in getting right in your this day and age is important, but Chip Kelly finds the tough-minded individuals, especially during a time where we're still finally trying to even out after the last couple of years back to normalcy, which we've almost had for the most part. And the Bruins are looking to find those guys who are ready. They have. And they got the transfer portal. 20 starters since 2020. That's a lot of guys since the transfer portals become a, a massive important part of college football. You could argue that the way the Bruins are recruiting, they're almost recruiting like a college basketball team looking to fill some holes in their football roster immediately with finding receivers to replace the likes of Phillips, who's in the NFL with the Titans. All these guys who they could try and fill. And while they haven't filled their tight end spot completely like the likes of Dolchich, they have found the Ezekiel, their own roster, the Hudson Habermill earning this scholarship from as coming as a walk-on. They're finding these little guys who are complete athletes. Kaz Allen, who's been there for quite some time for UCLA. They had the mixture of the transfers, the mixture of the, the super gritty, tough guys. And that's the program it seems like Chip Kelly wants to get. Find the freshmen who will replace those guys that graduate and then mix in with transfers. Does that bode well for the long term with Chip Kelly? Who knows? He just signed the extension. And with the Big Ten looming, is this a recipe for success? It could be a recipe for right now. And I like the idea of finding those tough-minded individuals for UCLA. It's just, who knows? It's, it's, it's yes and no. Transfer portal just completely changed the game. And at least how UCLA is framing it, they're winning and they're dominating at it. Or they're telling transfers, hey, you come to UCLA, we're recruiting you because we want you and we want you to start. And that's a winning recipe. And while it isn't necessarily the NIL, hey, come here, you can earn your keep, earn your money. It's not pay for play, as Chip Kelly's trying to inform everybody. It's not pay for play, but you're not going to come here just to go get a paycheck, but you're going to get here, get a good education or postgraduate education, in addition to possibly earning some playing time, some key eyes in the Pac-12, or soon to be the future look in the Big Ten for the Bruins, even though there's another Regents meeting in a a week to see what could be slapped on the wrist of UCLA. Regardless, Bruins, they're transfer you. We should appreciate DTR, and we should appreciate this Bruins team right now. It's 2-0. and They've taken care of business, and we'll look forward to South Alabama this week as we begin our preview for the South Alabama offense, defense, and our predictions 
and previews for the weekend against South Alabama. Meanwhile, for Locked On Pac-12, go make that your second listen with the host Spencer McLaughlin. He always puts on a great show. He does host Locked On Ducks. It's fine. It's fine. You can give him some some love with Locked On Pac-12, your second listen, the show for a record for the Locked On Network, Locked On Pac-12. Great show. Make that your second listen. Meanwhile, thanks for making Locked On UCLA your first listen every day. Again, go pound out the subscribe button on YouTube. Go watch, listen, and thank you for tuning in. Bruin fans, get those hands in the air. A clap time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. UCLA, fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.